Hi, I'm a Kwaba. Welcome to my channel. My name is AC Kokui. I have a new video for you today, and today we are doing a growing up African video. It's another one in my series. If you have not seen the other ones, definitely go check them out. It is under the playlist Growing Up African, where I ask, I ask different people with all different experiences. I've um, had someone talk from, I've had a couple from Nigeria, um, I've had some from Eritrea, and so on and so forth. So definitely go check that out. But today, I'm I'm actually going to be talking to myself <laughs> I'm going to be asking the questions to myself and you know kind of hearing giving you guys my response on the kind of questions that I would ask during the growing up African videos but also I asked on Instagram other people to ask me questions so I'm going to answer those questions as well but I want to give you a little bit background on me and here we go. My name is AC Kokui. Um, I, I don't know if I want to give you guys my full name. I have before if you watch other videos. Okay, so my full name is AC Mamako Kuyakalache. I am from Ghana. My family's from Ghana. Um, I was born in America. I was born in California. And I've lived here my whole life, um, except for one year where I lived in Nebraska. Since I was one, one, I've been going to Ghana um, every couple years or so. We try to make it every two years. So I've, I say Ghana raised me and America raised me. So I am definitely both. I call myself Ghanaian American and I'm just, yeah, I'm influenced by both cultures. I've talked about this also in my Ghana tag video. So check that out. But I am from the Ashanti tribe and the Ewe tribe. I am a great mix of two great tribes and so yes I am Ashanti and Ewe. There are a lot of languages and dialects in Ghana. Um, I speak tree. I speak tree. Um, I'm not completely fluent but I definitely understand most of it and I am trying to become fluent <laughs> by this year so we'll see if that can happen but yeah. So now I'm gonna answer some of the questions that that people ask me on Instagram and then I'll get to some of my own questions. So let's get to it. So one of the first ones, this is from a friend that knows me, says you could add a talk about why you are a picky eater. So yes, I am a very picky eater um, and that has to do with why <laughs> my culture because growing up we only ate Ghanaian food. We did not go we did not eat out, we did not eat fast food. Um, I We got McDonald's maybe once or twice a year and that would have to be after a lot of begging to my parents and like KFC like on special occasions. But those were the only two that I really knew, KFC and um, McDonald's. And oh yeah, Chinese food. We would do Chinese food when I was younger, but then I think when my, once my sister came around, we stopped doing that. We stopped eating Chinese food. So I, all I've known is really Ghanaian food most of my life. And um, we've had a schedule on, on how we eat. We if, if you still go to my house today, my parents still eat on that same schedule. So, you know, Mondays is jollof, Tuesdays is soup, Wednesdays is and so on and so forth. But I've been eating the same type of food my whole life. I am not accustomed to a lot of different other cultures, um, food and it's a good and a bad thing that I ha I don't eat fast food because, you know, the fast food's not good for you. But then it's made me a really picky eater. And so I don't like trying new things. Um, I would say college definitely expanded my palate a little more and now I eat too much fast food. But, um, but I stick to the things that I, I like. Even fast food, I, I pick plain food. Um, I'll only get a burger with ketchup and cheese on it. No, nothing extra, nothing too fancy. I do not want anything else. So 
even in that I don't eat vegetables and fruits as much as I should should and um, I thank college for introducing more fruits into my life but yes I yeah not to say that my parents didn't try forcing us to eat fruits and vegetables we did we definitely did um, but they would hide it in our food you know like in our jollof we have vegetables um, so we can get that <laughs> and and then we would have to eat fruits after our we would have to eat an apple um, after our dinner but it was like little things it wasn't really like here's like enjoy it it was just something that we had to do so I never really enjoyed eating it and that is something that I definitely want to embrace in my adult life um, a little more and so I can get that <laughs> I can be a little more healthy because I've eaten so much of not processed foods growing up I feel like I have a little bit of time to get it together um, before <laughs> before it starts to affect me. So that is something that I will definitely be incorporating. That was a very long answer. So let's try to make these go a little faster. Is your family fully assimilated? No, is your family assimilated fully or do you still stay close to tradition? So I would say half and half. Um, my parents are very modern. They are very on the up and up on what's kind of going on with like entertainment, pop culture, um, electronics. Because uh, I know that there are some, you know, African parents that don't really understand everything that's going on around them and so I would say my parents are, are, are not like that but they still have a lot of things that they don't understand that we have to explain to them. My parents have always been very like okay I want you to you know you do live in America so there are some things that you have to embrace but they have really kept us to still live in a sheltered life. Um, <laughs> I wasn't allowed to do sleepovers. I, you know, I had to cook. We would cook every weekend and cook for the rest of the week. I've done that my whole life. Um, there's a lot of things like, yeah, we live in America. Yeah, my parents are very like, in the know of what's going on, but we've always done things still with a Ghanaian background in it, like still with the Ghanaian um, hint to everything, not even a hint, like embraced. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say I'm definitely very, like I said, half and half of who I am because um, when you walk, Growing up, when you walk into my house, you will see like the Ghanaian, um, you will see African pictures, um, African art, and you know, we would have food always cooking that was Ghanaian. Maybe the thing that we assimilated to was maybe not watching so much <laughs> like the Nollywood movies, the Gollywood movies. We, my parents love like American movies, so that's kind of what I grew up on. Um, but even in Ghana, they watched those movies there too, so I don't know. But yeah, I think that we, we've taken half and half. We've def we definitely eat this our food. Um, even still when I go home and I went on it, I took my sister to school. We still packed our lunch <laughs> and we weren't going to pick up fast food on the way. I was like, I'll treat you guys to some in and out. Like, <laughs> like we don't have to eat, like, you know, we don't have to eat what we packed, which is something that we always do. We'll pack food, pack rice and stew and take it with us, you know? But, um, yeah, we're not fully, we're not fully assimilated into American culture. And the fact that my parents took us home all the time so that we could get both sides to things and just the way that we respect others, the way that we talk to us. I'm sorry that the sun keeps on shifting. I don't know what's going on. Get it together. But yes, um, the way that we talk to people, the way that we respect 
people like if i see an adult i'm not gonna call you sarah hey sarah no mr miss you know or i just don't say your name <laughs> so yeah but it's always been ingrained in everything that we do just culture tradition everything what are some african traditions you would like to pass down to your children I would like to pass down a lot. Um, not even just like African traditions, but just like how I grew up. The fact that I got to go to Ghana multiple times, I want that incorporated in my kid's life. I want them to see both sides. I want them to have an appreciation for, you know, how they live out there or how like I grew up and how um, it's just different and how it's a little more fun <laughs> over there. I want them to see that side, that it's fun over there. It, there it's not the huts that um, like America shows and all that stuff. I want them to know their culture. I know, I want them to know where they came from. I definitely love the whole wedding aspect. I want them to definitely and get that, you know, and maybe when, I don't know if I'm gonna have the whole like, bringing the gifts and all i probably will to a certain extent like yeah you gotta still do the bringing of the gifts from your significant other and all, all that stuff maybe to a certain extent but not as like OD as it'll probably have to be for me <laughs> they um, cooking and i want them to learn the language once i that's why i'm trying to get fluent right now i want to be fluent so i can teach them and yeah but i don't really know of other traditions that i would pass on i can't really think of them right now how was it being the oldest child in oldest child in an african household we get the brunt of everything we go through everything first i mean it's like that with any older child in any culture yeah you go through whatever um first but i was supposed to be i'm supposed to be the standard i'm supposed to set the standard and i'm supposed to be the big influence and that was like i feel like that was hard to carry it still is i'm still the oldest <laughs> that hasn't changed it was definitely hard to carry but i feel like i didn't have to do it by myself i also had a cousin that lived with me and she was older than all of us and so she was kind of like the big sister and so i kind of let her take that role but i still you know i'm still the oldest yeah it was just hard because i never got to go anywhere i never got to do anything um barely my parents will say you did a lot you, uh, you partied a lot yes okay <laughs> okay um but yeah no i i didn't get to do much and then even like going to college and stuff um i didn't have much of a choice i had five places and they kind of had to be all in the same area in california and so you know it, it's like i didn't really get to explore as much as i could and when i went to college boy did i explore and so i feel like with my my siblings they get a, yeah i feel like with my siblings they get to do a lot more with the traveling like my sister's in socal my brother is um in boston and stuff like that so yeah i just feel like i didn't know much especially like being first generation i didn't know much and i had to learn everything like by myself and doing it living like a sheltered life it was difficult um, so i am glad that i am the oldest and that i went through that and that i can show my siblings like what else what is there what other things that they can do and they're definitely doing it so i think i've done my job <laughs> um, but being the oldest daughter is yeah oldest and then the oldest daughter child please that could be another video i can actually do another video on that last question from here from the questions what are some cultural differences you have experienced between your travels through ghana and the u.s so while i'm traveling I'm assuming that it's um, 
like my two different experiences being in Ghana and being in the US, but not actually like as I'm traveling. And there are so many different cultural differences. Um, just the way that kids speak to their parents, the way that they're allowed to go out and do things, <laughs> the way, um, it's kind of everything that I mentioned, just like the responsibilities and stuff that I feel like I had versus my friends, um, having to come home and like really be on my studies and, uh, you know, adding cooking and cleaning to, uh, to life and having to fit that in and still be on top of everything um, it's definitely difficult and seeing how my other friends may not have had the same responsibilities or not as pushed upon um, that was very interesting to see but then also on the different side of things you would think I don't know if you would think that but I just had a little bit more leniency when it came to being in Ghana um, because of the fact that my I don't know it was just everybody used to be in the neighborhood everybody used to be outside and you know having fun playing with their friends and stuff like that and so I definitely um, and going to school I going outside and doing that I definitely go out way more when I'm well when I was a kid when I was in Ghana I would go out more in Ghana than I would get to in America yeah it was like an everyday thing it was just if I had family obligations then I wouldn't go out but I would get to go out more and see my friends and just um, hang out with cousins and stuff like that a lot more than I did in America. I think with that it was just my parents were more trusting of the area, trusting of the people around and uh, more trusting of Ghanaian people and American people so who knows but yeah those are a couple of cultural differences which I can do I can do another video talking about more that I experienced yeah. yeah those are some of the questions people ask me and I'm gonna ask myself a couple more questions and close this video out the question that I ask everybody <laughs> um, is how did you Growing up African, in my case, in my case, growing up Ghanaian, shaped me, and it definitely shaped who I am today because I I had the both sides, you know, and I choose what I take from each side, and it all is a part of me, and I don't know, I just always felt a sense, just a really big sense of pride. A really big sense of pride being Ghanaian. Uh, even though it wasn't popular, it wasn't what's trending, <laughs> it wasn't, you know, the, it was made fun of, it, you know, being African and stuff. It was definitely made fun of. And I don't know, that never stopped me from being so prideful um, of my culture, even though I was, a dark skinned girl that I struggled with growing up, especially. Um, it was hard growing up that, in that sense, but me being Ghanaian, you couldn't tell me anything. Um, and I definitely think that has a lot to do with how my parents raised us. Like, we were always very proud of where we came from. We showcased in everything. I was a Ghanaian princess for Halloween, maybe three years in a row. Maybe I took a break and then I was Belle and then I was a Ghanaian princess again. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was just an everything. I can think of so many projects where I got to showcase that. And so I've just always been prideful of where I've come from. And then going to college and being around so many people that were also African, um, mainly Nigerian, but I didn't feel like, you know how 
some Nigerian dogs are just very prideful of their culture. And I think that that's why I gravitated towards a lot of them and why they gravitated towards me because we just were very prideful of who we were and where we came from. So um, that has always been one of my confidence uh, aspects of me. My, yeah, one of my confidence aspects that I was brand new. I think it's just shaped me to remember, you know, where I come from constantly and to strive to continue to put Ghana on the map. And lastly, I want to answer this question or address this question. How do I feel about the food challenge? <laughs> so, um, if you don't, if you guys don't know what that is, it's a challenge. That's a challenge that's happening. Um, that even, so basically, influencers and people are getting, um, they're ordering fufu, Lucy soup, um, jollof, uh, maybe some other things, and you know they're saying they're trying African food for the first time. And yes, it's African food. <laughs> Yes, it's African food, but it's not all of Africa. Africa is a continent, y'all. There are 54 countries in Africa. So everybody eats different things. Yes, we may use the same type of plants or the same uh, different vegetables and spices and stuff, but we all make our food different. So first of all, when you're saying you're eating African food, be specific to where you're eating mostly eating Nigerian food. Um, I'm assuming most of the places that they're getting the food from, it is a Nigerian spot. And so, yeah, because Igusi is Nigerian. Fufu, yes, we eat it in Ghana. Um, but you just have to be specific to where you're getting your food from. And if you're getting it from a Nigerian restaurant, you're trying Nigerian food for the first time. You're not trying all of Africa. <laughs> you are not. That's the first thing about how I feel. Second, who told you guys to hit the fufu on, on the top like it's a butt? <laughs> like it's a botos. Who told you to, to hit it like that? I, no. I, I've never seen that. At least, not that I've seen in any Ghanaian person, not that I've seen with any Ghanaian person eating their fufu or Nigerian person eating their fufu. No, I have not seen that. But if that is a thing, okay. But I've never seen that. Anyway, um, I just think in general, I'm happy that, you know, all these African, because I don't know specifically where they're getting the food from, but mostly Ni I'm assuming Nigerian restaurants. I'm I, I'm happy that they are getting customers. I'm happy that you're bringing money into our pockets. Thank you, thank you for that. But we are not a trend. <laughs> we are not a trend, and that is the the problem that I have with people embracing African, um, specifically my culture, Ghanaian culture because I want people to. Since I've been younger, I've wanted people to really see what Ghana is about and I want them to like, I want them to experience it. I've always had my friends try my food. Um, I told them about Ghana, all that stuff. So I've always showed that. But we are not a trend. We're not here for a short time. You're here for a long time. And for um, people to just take the food to show and then insult it. <laughs> there have been so many, I've seen maybe two that people weren't disrespectful to it. And even one of them that I didn't think was that disrespectful, he was. I don't know. He was talking about the smell in the beginning and all that, but anyway, yes. So it is okay to try different peoples, to try different cultures, foods. It is definitely okay to do that. But is this something that you're going to be eating over and over again? 
Is this something that you actually want to embrace and actually add to your palette? Or is this just something for views? <laughs> Ask yourself that. Ask yourself that when you're making these videos. Now, I'm not a big fufu person. I eat bamboo. I eat bamboo. Even though I'm Ghanaian, I don't like fufu like that. But I never sit here and disrespect her and go, oh, oh. Or I've, ne I've never had a goosey before either. Um, but I would never disrespect Nigerian food. And there are some like East African foods that I don't like as well. But I never sit there and go, oh my gosh, no. I, I find what I like and I eat that. There is um, this YouTube couple that I watch, Tay and Lou. They had um, igusi and different soups and stews out in front of them and they were eating for food with it. Tay knew, was it Tay? Yeah, Tay knew that she does not like okra. So she did not go for the okra soup or the okra, yeah, she did not go for the okra soup. If you know you don't like something like that, don't go. <laughs> Stick to, I don't know. She just was mindful of that. She was mindful of the fact that she didn't like okra, so she knew she wasn't going to like it. It's just be respectful. Be respectful. Thanks for putting money into African people's pockets, but definitely be respectful of the culture that you are that you are bringing awareness to um because it's dangerous it really is dangerous and i just i don't know people eat this on the regular like you're not gonna stop us from eating our food but you are also stopping people from actually wanting to and trying to experience different things so just be mindful of the power that you have as an influencer and that's all i have to say on that <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching my, I hope the sun wasn't too much, but thank you guys so much for watching my Growing Up African Ghanaian Edition featuring me. I may do another one um, talking about different topics or different questions and stuff like that. So definitely if you have more things that you want to ask me, comment down below. I'll definitely do a part two. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Come back for more videos. There are a ton of other videos that I have. So go and check those out not just under growing up african i do beauty i do uh, self-care and so much more vlogs and more so go check that out and if you like this video give it a big thumbs up and comment down below so we can continue the conversation down there all right you guys bye